Hello and welcome to the session. In today's session, we will be discussing about reduced instruction set computer architecture. Now this architecture is also called RISC architecture and is popular in computer science uh, for many different uh, applications and uh, development of processes. Well, when we talk about an architecture in context of computer, we basically mean the instruction sets only, right? And instruction sets are the one which basically determine what kind of hardware is to be integrated within a computer system. Now, instruction design primarily focuses on two basic techniques, right? And the first one which, which is uh, there is the microprogrammed control unit and complex instruction set computer which is also called CISC. Now, the basic idea in this particular architecture was that we were making very complex instruction sets. That means even for addition, we were having at least 10 to 15 addition instructions, right? So those addition instructions were implemented with the help of microprogram control. And that is why the term microprogram control unit and CISC. Why? Because microprogram control unit facilitated the development of complex instruction set computers and that is what we will be discussing slightly more details. Then uh, cache and instruction pipeline. Now these were the two things which were brought in later into the computer uh, in, in the development of computer instruction sets. They actually changed the whole uh, gambit with, with say for instruction design in the sense that that reduce instruction set uh, computers started becoming popular and they become uh, in fact uh, one of the key, uh, key design architecture as far as instruction set is considered. Now historically if we see why complex instruction sets were needed, right? So there was a large gap in the speed of memory and instruction in the past. It used to exist, but cache has fulfilled that particular gap to a certain extent, right? So uh, let us look into an example that uh, suppose we are dealing with floating point addition, uh, addition, right? So if we have not implemented an instruction within the hardware, then how this particular stuff will be executed? First, fetching of mentisa and exponents. Right? Then comparing exponents, the com uh, the both the exponents will be compared. Then possible shifting of one of the mentisa so that both the uh, both the mentisas are aligned as per the ex same exponent. Then addition of the mentisa has to take place, right? And after the addition, normalization of result is also required. And finally, after normalization of result, overflow and uh, in fact, uh, before the normalization, overflow and uh, condition will be checked and finally the results will be stored. So there will be a number of sequential instructions which will be required to execute floating point addition. Now if that is the case, uh, obviously it is going to fetch at least six to seven such instructions from the memory and the execution is going to take place and accessing memory since it is very expensive operation, then designer thought why not put this floating point instruction, right, addition instruction as part of instruction set of the computer and just feed the, uh, the give the mentisa as well as uh, exponents to, to those instructions and the additions will be performed. So there will not be six fetch cycles which will be needed for such kind of instructions. So that way they wanted to minimize the uh, transfer of instruction to the uh, to, to, to the CPU. And then uh, obviously when this particular instruction will be executed by the CPU, the microprogram will still require to compare exponents, possible shifting of mentisa, then performing the addition, then the uh, normalizing and checking overflow and then storing the, uh, storing the result in any case is required. So these steps then in any case will be required and they will be put in the microprogram. 
So once the microprogram is going to take control of thereafter and since microprogram lies within the CPU, so there will not be any additional memory operation required from the point of view of instruction set is considered. So the idea basically was if we can put more and more instructions within the CPU and there was you know very large scale integration going on and it was moving towards ultra large scale integration. So a uh, lot of space was available, lot of uh, chips could be integrated onto a uh, onto a simple uh, machine uh, in, on a processor and uh, onto a chip and that used to cause okay why not put more and more complex instructions within the computer domain or the micro code okay however uh, so can it be made a machine instruction that was the idea right so the idea was to make it a machine instruction so that it executes more efficiently however with cache memory uh, for instruction and data, right? So availability of the cache memory brought in this particular change and the gap between the memory as well as uh, CPU that got reduced drastically. So whatever you could do with the help of uh, microprogram, you could can also do with the help of cache memory. In, in fact, uh, you must have heard that these days computers have uh, on, uh, I mean the on chip cache right which is instruction cache which is l1 cache instruction cache as well as data cache which is available to the processor so that kind of a cache memory since is available so instruction can easily be moved to that particular place right and the advantage the gap gap advantage which uh, designer wanted to take by moving the instruction set into micro uh, micro program control unit or micro code uh, kind of format was no longer available with the hardware advancements. Then the comparison was between microcode and the microcode is basically uh, uh, microprogramming only right and VLSI technology. So control unit which was basically used uh, microprograms why the microprograms were used in the earlier times? Because it was cost effective and simpler than the hardware control. You just need to add more program if you want to append the instruction set. You don't need to design, redesign the whole circuit which happens in case you are doing a hardwired control unit because you are fabricating the circuits, right? You are fabricating the logic gates. So obviously you got to, like it is something like if you are creating a plant, right? If you want to add more units and efficiently you want to do that particular thing probably the same plan could be redesigned completely in a much better way but it will require design of the same plant once again right if installing two different units at two different places may not be that much efficient and that is why uh, the, the this uh, VLSI technology or ULSI technology was considered not very efficient as far as uh, moving a smaller instruction set to a bigger instruction set is concerned. Okay, more flexibility that is what I am talking about. The proposals were to include string matching, polynomial evaluation, floating point etc. into the instruction set. So people wanted to move the instructions which were very commonly used even subroutines which were commonly utilized moving them to uh, micro code so that they execute uh, more efficiently. However, as you, uh, as I explained, the, this particular the availability of cache uh, somehow reduced that particular need, somehow eliminated that kind of a need to certain extent. So, however, a simple set of instruction may require simpler, faster logic to execute instruction faster. So, the idea is simplicity. Right? Nothing much than that. If you are talking about simplicity, then what do we say as far as simplicity is concerned? Well, simplicity is when we have smaller number of large size instructions, do we have, that is, that is a, a simplicity or we may have smaller number of small sized instructions. In fact, it should be, uh, the idea was in risk, we have smaller number of small size instruction not large size instruction in that particular sense okay and in uh, complex instruction sets we had a larger number of large size instruction so it was cost effective to have smaller compact programs which require complex instructions now the advantage of uh, having complex instruction set was that your program size got compacted 
right? As far as number of instructions are concerned. Why? Because one floating point instruction, right? Which is required in complex instructions at computer. Whereas in a different machine, it will be converted into six instructions, which will be executed one by one to execute a single floating point operation, right? So the program became compact, but the size of instruction became larger, okay? But the instru instruction size and addressing modes requires more bit. So the more, for example, uh, the 8086 has a large number of addition instructions, right? So now if those uh, are multiple types of addition instruction like add with carry, add with memory operand, add uh, one memory operand with register operand, add uh, memory operand with uh, the, the, the immediate operand, so many, so many different operations can be uh, utilized. So these are all different instructions, right? So the point was here very, very simple. Can we, can we reduce these instruction, number one? Number two, can we reduce less, uh, can we reduce the number of instructions okay so that is the idea of this case okay are the total size of instruction smaller the total size now what what was done when we got smaller number of we got smaller number of large size instructions in a program in the complex instruction set computer. That was the idea. Why? Because we are moving instructions into microcode. So the number of instructions are more, but that means size of instruction is a bit more, but the number of instructions which are required to execute a program are lesser, right? So this is what is the concept of smaller number of large size instruction within a program, okay? So are the total size of instructions uh, smaller? But if I, uh, I mean compute the total size, that is the number of instruction multiplied multiplied by the number of bits, right? So is it going to be smaller than when we are using a uh, reduced instruction set computer? That was debated because reduced instructions are smaller in size, okay, although the program size is larger, right? So larger program size but lesser size, lesser number of bits. Here we have smaller program but larger number of, uh, I mean large size of instruction. So that was the dichotomy and that was the basic trade-off which is to be considered when we are dealing with risk versus complex instruction set computer. RISC had simpler instructions and register addressing, right? So it has smaller length instruction. So this is the key, which was uh, the key criteria as far as reduced instruction set of computer is concerned. Then compiler on CICS, uh, CISC also favors simpler instruction. In fact, uh, Compilers play a very important role when we are dealing with uh, program conversion for a specific machine. And compiler designer normally favors the simpler instruction. That is what is the uh, categorization. The, even if you create very, very complex instruction, it may not be utilized in that particular context. It may not be uh, utilized in the sense that the, it, the equivalent uh, machine instruction to a programming instruction may, may be requiring several uh, constraints, several characteristics, several par parameters which may not match as it is. Therefore, uh, compiler designers were not favoring the uh, the, uh, the, the complex instruction, but they, rather they were favoring the simpler instruction. So uh, the, then the final point here is that the higher level language instruction and complex instruction set computers. Complex instruction set computers has more powerful instruction. True, that is true. Like floating point addition is there. Even some people wanted to move case instruction into the hardware also, right? However, these complex instructions are difficult to exploit due to complexity of conditions. That's exactly what I uh, spoke about uh, in the previous slide. Then instruction pipelining is more difficult in complex instruction set computer. You know, in instruction pipelining will work very well when you can divide a particular sequence of instruction into equal sized compartment. However, when we are dealing with complex instruction set computers, that task was difficult because some instruction, the fetch cycle may take the same time, but then decoding also may take similar time. But 
execution, some instruction may require only few cycles, whereas some other instructions may require very large number of cycles for execution, right? So that created a major compartmentalization problem as far as risk pipe pipelining, uh, the sorry, CISC pipelining is concerned, okay? A control unit of CISC were more complex as, com as a control store is large for richer instruction set, okay, which results in increase in execution time for simpler instruction. Now, this is a very important uh, statement which is there. That is, control of complex instructions is more complex, right? The more complex means there will be bigger control unit. Bigger size control unit simply means bigger size microprogram. The bigger size microprogram, obviously, whenever you are having larger size, obviously, some additional cell, uh, I mean, input, I mean, additional uh, uh, timing is required to search, to find all that kind of information. And obviously, the overall effect will be that the simpler instructions which are there, like simple addition, may require more time as far as execution is concerned than the normal reduced instruction uh, computer machine, where the simplicity leads to faster execution. Well, uh, another characteristic which was studied during uh, this particular time was the characteristics of high level language programs. So these were the hardware oriented uh, reason. First one being the, 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 uh, the, the, the gap between the speed uh, of uh, main memory and the CPU started decreasing, right? In addition, then the micro code is no magical stuff. That's what was the statement. Then the, high, the support for high level languages were not being utilized, right? So all these uh, were the reasons in any case. But in addition to that, one of the major re requirement or major problem which was there was that ultimately it is the high level language program which are to be translated into machine language program and they are to be executed efficiently, right? And the characteristic was very different. When it was studied, um, there were many researchers who studied this particular concept, Tenenbaum being one of those, and uh, uh, Berkeley University was another where this particular statement, uh, study was made. Uh, what they found that the most of the variables can be categorized into three different types. Integral, integral variables, which are 15 to 25 percent of time, scalar variables, which are happening 15 to 60 percent of the time, and the arrays or the structures, which were having only 20 to 30 percent. So array and structure, which we, uh, which basically uh, are uh, very complex in nature, were not utilized for more than 20 or 30 percent of the time. So that was a, a major, major, uh, I mean, clinching point. The second clinching point is the operations, like simple assignment, okay, simple assignment operation was occurring for 35 to 40 percent of operation requiring some kind of uh, definitely uh, some multiplication, addition, those kinds of things, right. Then the looping constructs were just 2 to 6 percent, not very high, okay. Procedural calls, they were 10 to 15 percent, so they actually are uh, slightly more complex, so probably they may require some support. And then if instruction which ha was happening to be around 35 to 40 percent, you, you study your own programs, right, whatever you have written. Uh, what difference you will find that you will be using more looping because those are the programs, whatever programs which we have given to you, technically at, uh, require some looping and some array. Otherwise, there will be slight uh, mismatch from this particular statistics, but this statistics were uh, uh, in general for most of the programs. Now, one of the important con uh, consequence over there is the subroutine calls. Now, uh, subroutine calls most uh, happens to be one of the most time consuming operation, okay. And most have less than six arguments and uh, six local variables, okay. And procedural cost nesting almost uh, mostly less than six to eight levels only. Now, this is a very important thing as far as risk uh, risk is concerned and we are going to discuss about this particular thing at a slightly later stage that how it affected the risk uh, uh, risk designing and how it helped uh, in enhancing the performance as far as risk is concerned. But this subroutine calls 
are very, very important. They are occurring for 15, 10 to 15% of the time in most of the program. And without more and more stress onto structured programming, this particular figure is increasing all the time, right? So, but what is the important point? It does just does require not less more than six to eight parameters which are to be passed to a particular function or subroutine. You have written C program. So you, you write five to six variables only which are passed. Then local variables may be six, seven, eight like that. And then uh, the call, like you call one person, one program calling another, another function calling third, fourth, fifth, like that. So you are not going beyond six to eight level of such nestings. So this was, these were the program characteristics. And all these things, whatever we have discussed so far, led to the development of reduced instruction set architecture. So what was the logic behind RISC? Like keep lesser and simpler instruction. Why? Because we have cache memory. So don't make very complex instruction. Even compiler support the simpler instructions. Instruction cache has greatly reduced the importance of micro instructions. So we have cache memory, right? So probably we do not require uh, big micro instructions or big size micro programs. That means more, uh, we don't require large number of instructions within the processor. Then moving software into microcode does not make it better, better, but harder to change because you have put it in the microcode, you have fabricated the chip, right? Now how you are going to change? But if it is in the software, in the operating system and uh, in the system software, you can always, uh, you can change that particular scenario easily. Microcode can be, uh, can be moved to runtime libraries of the risk also. Okay, so the runtime libraries which are easier to code, easier to change can be utilized instead of uh, the microcode. Then simple decoding and pipeline executions are more important than the size of the program, right? So just like I indicated the size, right? The size of the risk program as far as number of instructions are concerned are, are going to be larger. But overall size may be smaller. But what is being stated over here is that simple, simple decoding and pipeline execution. So if decoding logic is simple and we are doing pipeline execution, then it may be uh, very, very effective than the uh, complex instruction set instruction where we have smaller number of instructions within a program, but the size of those instruction may differ. Right? And it will be very complex to decode those instructions. Keep operands in registers. So register operand you know are the fastest, right? So keep operand in registers results in simpler, uh, uh, result, uh, registers results in simpler and smaller instructions. So uh, if I use register operand, it will be, I'll be having simpler and the smaller instruction sets, okay? Uh, because register addressing require smaller space, okay? But for that you will be requiring some more additional thing, but the logic is this, okay? Keep the operands that are to be repeatedly used in registers, okay? So this is uh, somewhere all those operands which are to be repeatedly used uh, again and again, keep them in registers. And this was the job of the compiler, all right? So with this logic, okay, we start, uh, design the characteristics. Now the first characteristics as far as risk is concerned is one instruction per cycle. Now this one instruction per cycle is possible because of the pipeline execution and we would like to talk about the pipeline execution at a uh, later point of time. But it is something like in every clock cycle one instruction is getting output. Now that's a, a very tall claim to make but this is possible because of the simplicity. So fetch operands from registers and perform the ALU operation on them and store the results in the register. This is what is the basic uh, things which you do, all right? So fetch operand from register, perform the operation and store values back to register. Now those things can be done in one clock cycle or maybe two clock cycles. Now we want in one clock cycle the uh, the, the one instruction, so how it is going to be possible. So obviously we will be going for pipelining. Then hardware control unit increases the execution efficiency, okay. Hardware control unit because the hardware uh, is, it, it avoids the delay, 
right? So hardware control units are very, very important. It, it, is, it is very fast, but as the problem was that a hardware control unit is to be redesigned again and again. Now in this particular case, because of the simplicity, the, uh, the design is much, much simpler, right? The simplicity of instructions, okay? Then register to register operands, just as stated above. Now, when you are using register to register operand, you will require load and store instruction for memory operation. So one instruction will definitely be required for loading the data and one for storing the data. Without that, this particular architecture is not going to work, right? So in addition to uh, execution in the, uh, in the machine, uh, in, I mean using register operand, you definitely require uh, load and store instruction. Then keep frequently used operands in registers. So that is where the optimizing compilers comes in and simplify the instruction set and the control unit. Now simplific simplified your instruction set is, your control unit is simplified, your control unit is simplified, you can implement it with the help of hardware. It is easier to design, easier to implement, easier to change, right? Then simple addressing modes like register addressing with displacement or relative addressing, just these operations, right? Just simpler addressing modes, register direct, uh, using register or register with some kind of a displacement or relative, relative to the program counter kind of a situation. Just few addressing modes that will be good enough. Once again, this is also going to simplify your control unit and number of instructions will for, be further reduced. So that way, the number of instructions are getting reduced, the control unit get, is getting simplified and you are moving to the domain of reduced instructions set computers which execute quite fast. It, they are not slower than the complex instruction set computers. Then simple instruction formats, right? Now the instruction format may not be many as we have in uh, 8086 where we one instruction was just one byte long, two byte long, three byte, four, like that. The sizes of instructions were from one to six bytes. Here there will be only two type of instruction. Uh, the instructions which are referring to the memories, that is load and store, and the instructions which are executing on the register operands and storing results in the register operands, okay? So simple instruction format, so just two or three different type of formats. So operation decoding and uh, register operand accessing can be performed in parallel. So now that whenever we say that if we are uh, operation decoding and register operand accessing can be performed in parallel, right? Now that is a very important situation. Why? Because now we are already talking about that if two steps can be performed in parallel, right? Then we are moving to some kind of pipeline domain or a pipeline uh, or a multiprocessor domain or different kind of a domain which is much much more efficient than a uniprocessor domain when everything is to be done in a sequential manner, all right? Performance can be enhanced during using optimizing compilers. This is what we have already stated. In general, a microprocessor uses large areas of a microprogrammed control unit. So that was the uh, uh, scenario, very, very large area, sometimes more than 50% was utilized by the microprogram. Program. Okay, uh, I mean, in general, MI uses large area for microprogram control unit, right? So this was the case. The risk chip devote, devotes about 10% of this area uh, to the control unit. In fact, even less than that. So uh, control unit became smaller. Now that means around 30 to 40% area became vacant. So what that 30 to 40 percent area should be uh, utilized in, uh, um, in reduced instruction set computers, how it can be utilized. So that became the, uh, uh, the criteria, okay? Uh, then risk architecture, uh, architecture processor is easier to build because of the simpler logic and simpler instruction set, simpler, simplicity everywhere, right? So simplicity led to easier design and better performance. Well, it led to that, but then we had a huge area available to us in the, uh, in the microprocessor, right? So how we can uh, use that particular area? Well, uh, in uh, reduced instruction set computers, we use large register files, all right? So uh, now large register files in the terms of more than 100 uh, registers were used as far as uh, reduced instruction set computers. However, look into the first statement. 
it says in general about 32 registers were considered optimum. So machine designer found out the different number of registers which are required as far as uh, processing the instructions are concerned. And they said okay just 32 number of uh, instructions uh, 32 registers are good enough for any kind of a situation. We already have 16 or 17 as far as uh, uh, the, the 8086 is concerned. So just double it, it is good enough. So why we need more registers then if 32 is required, right? So the idea was how to optimize the use of, uh, I mean uh, 136 register, how to optimize their use, okay? Just 32 is sufficient and 136 are available. What we are going to do with them? There is no point having this many registers, but we have the space, right? So the risk registers file provides. So this became a risk register file. It provides for support for call return with the help of register window. Now this is one of the most important concept. In fact, there are two important concepts in RISC. One is this large register file and the second one is have the pipeline. Now this concept goes very simply that the number of, uh, I mean, uh, the registers, right, only 32 is required at a time for optimizing the execution of a particular program. So what we do with the others? we have large register file but we have no use. Well, we go back to the discussion we had. One of the discussion point which we stated was that one of the most important operation is call and return. It happens 10 to 15 percent of the time and the use of that kind of operation is increasing, all right. The problem here is that when you call a function, okay. The, not only the return address, but the content of many registers is stored and you pass lot many parameters also to the new program, right? So for example, in C you use call by value. So you are calling a function, you are calling by value. So those values are going to be transferred, right? Return address is going to be stored. The function will start executing, the control will pass, right? The function will start executing and the control will return back. Right? So there are many uh, undue operations, specifically uh, the passing of parameters, okay, is, is definitely going to be there, right? And the registers which are going to be utilized by this particular newer program, right, those old values of those registers may have to be saved because the effect of this particular function should not be carried on to the older function. So what we require is probably a different activation state, different set of registers when we call from one function to a second function. And that is what was able to, uh, we were able to do with the large register file in RISC. It was not possible in CISC, right? 32 registers are required for the normal execution of the program. But if we are moving this particular con uh, execution from one function to second function, right? So the, those kinds of uh, storage of register operand and all those housekeeping operations which you are required to do for subroutine calls in risk was greatly reduced. Now how that was reduced? Well, this is what I would like to state with you. So suppose in a risk processor you have 0 to 9 registers which are storing the global variable. All right, and those registers. So suppose the global variables, 10, 10 registers are good enough for storing the global variables. And remaining uh, here you will find around 32. Uh, in fact, total number of for each uh, function you require around 32 operand, uh, 32 variables, roughly 32 registers. That is what is our objective. Now, how those 32 registers is going to be used in risk? So First, these 10 registers are global, so irrespective of function A, function B or function C, right? All of these functions are using these global variables So, and obviously uh, they should not be affecting uh, whatever changes they are making over there, it does not matter because those global variables are expected to be changed, okay? Uh, that is why those variable, uh, those functions will be changing it. Uh, technically speaking, global variables uh, need not be changed by these function A, function B, function C as side effect of functions, but anyhow, why? They, they, they may be our, uh, the objective related to it, fine. So we have this particular global variables which will be shared by function A, function B and function C, right? So remaining 
uh, 22, how they will be used, okay. So let us look into the global variable uh, for function A, okay. So function A, what does function A do? So obviously when a domain program calls function A, right. So when you call, in fact, uh, let the function A may be the main program itself, right, the main function itself. So main function, some of the parameters can be specified like command line, uh, line arguments, right. So those command line parameters will be stored in these registers, 130, the six registers which are there. So once those six, uh, six, register, six registers store the command line argument, okay, if there are more, obviously they will be stored in the memory and the uh, inefficient way is going to come into picture. But in general, they are less than six, right? That was the program assessment. Just in one to two percent of the cases, they were more than six. So therefore, we, we, are, very, we are in a very safe zone, right? Then the local variable starts coming in over here. So there are 10 local variables. So they will, those 10 local variables, you may have more in, in the present scenario, but uh, think that uh, there were just 10 local variables, all right? So those 10 local variables then will be in 10 registers, right? So you will be operating in this particular area, all right? And as and when this particular function A wants to call function B, all right? So function A will put those uh, parameters for function B in the temporary registers, which are register number 161 to 121. So for calling, suppose you are calling on, uh, let's say A, B, C and D, four variables, right? Uh, or let's say X, Y, Z, right? Three variables only. So those three variables X, Y and Z will be put in the temporary variables, right? So they are also registers. And look into the advantage. The return value will be coming into these contemporary registers and they all will also be utilized. So these two, these six registers are being shared between function A and function B. Function A calls function B, function B knows my values are here, okay, in register number 116 to 121. So there is no physical movement except that at the time when uh, before it calling, it moved some value over here and thereafter the call is seamless, right? It's call to function B is seamless because there is no need to transfer because they are already in the required number of registers. So the value are moved to the, the registers of the function B. So there is an overlap, okay? So there is an overlap of registers between A and B. What for? Because function A, whatever parameter it has to pass for function B will be in those temporary variables and they are also the parameter of function B. The return value will also come back in this particular area. Then function B also moves, the context is moved to this particular function. So function B gets its own local variable in these new registers, right? So it is not affecting these older uh, uh, function A registers at all. It is not touching them. There are only, uh, there are new registers which are required and the processing can take place in these registers, right? So there is no need to even touch those register. Whereas in the case of complex instruction set computers, this area would be utilized. This area will be utilized by register B then. And then obviously they need to be stored somewhere so that we can restore the context when function B terminates. So this is not required anymore in case of reduced instruction set computer, right? Similarly, function B will call uh, function C and similarly they will be sharing like that, okay? So the A calling B, B calling C, all that, right? So that the nesting, nesting is going on, nesting of function is going on and one function is calling another, another one, uh, that function is calling another, but there is no need to store any of the values except the overlapping of register, overlap registers are basically sending the parameters and in the return cycle, they will be, the, the return values will be stored and the, uh, if, um, if uh, B has returned, then B will be passing back the results to A. So like that, the overall effect of instruction, the execution of subroutines become very, very effective when we are dealing with reduce instruction set computer. The similar thing has been shown with the help of a circular buffer, all right? So A input 
this a in basically basically is the is equivalent to this parameter of function a right so a input right so a input came from uh, the the let's say it is the uh, calling program that is your command line argument all right then a local variables so the main program is starting to exist uh, this is the area this is the context of uh, the loc uh, that is uh, uh, the local variables and then b that is b and a uh, that is uh, a output right in the sense so uh, this we are saying okay so this is basically the values are passed so this is the area we are referring to so temporary of a and uh, b input is over here so all these values are seamlessly passed so b knows my where my parameters are here so it will start executing right then it will call c likewise by passing the values okay here and c knows my uh, parameters are here so it doesn't uh, it just uh, keeps on working in its local with its local variable it calls d d calls e right e calls so e e e calls f but when f is being called there is a danger that f uh, if f calls something else there it will be overwritten right so this is the saved window pointer which tells us that no 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 we cannot call f unless we put the a in and a location into some area in the memory as a safe uh, a safe values otherwise uh, f may overwrite the area of a therefore we, we we can't take that particular risk therefore the suppose how many windows are there one window two three four five and six windows are there but in effect only five level of nesting is possible because we cannot compromise on the the on f writing over the a so this is the way this is the way the circular window operates now if f if f uh, is to be called the a in as well as a uh, a local variable they need to be stored into the memory right and then only the f can be uh, f uh, f will be starting to execute so it will require some uh, some time to, uh, some time for execution in that particular sense but that is how it works right and and in most cases you won't require more than 5 to 6 level it can and normally uh, this window can be having eight uh, such uh, uh, sub windows right so if eight windows are there then only seven uh, uh, nesting of uh, the function nesting up to seven will uh, will work in that situation eighth is not going to work so this is the way the whole thing works right then the possibility of more than seven is hardly in five to six percent cases. So if you require a in and a location to be saved, it will be only for five to six percent of the cases. Ninety-five to ninety-nine uh, percent of the cases are going to require only seven level of nesting. And so you can imagine the amount of saving as far as function calls are concerned, right? This would have been required if this register window is not there this is going to be required for every call that is the saving here in this particular case in 95 percent case uh, procedure call uh, i mean functions uh, function calls it is not going to be required because the nesting is not going to exceed seven or eight so this is how risk plays on statistics risk plays on the characteristics of program and that's how those uh, processors are able to utilize the large register file to a great extent while uh, in an instruction call, procedure call and return. And this is one of the most important instruction and we are emphasizing that. That is what we have been emphasizing. No, you should be writing structured programs, right? You should be using object oriented programming, right? So all these kinds of technologies can be utilized in reduced instruction set computers very easily with the help of larger register files. And that is one of the major uh, advantage of dealing with reduced instruction set computers. Well, that is one of the advantage. Is there any more stuff which we can think of as far as risk is concerned? Well, there is a major advantage. Another major advantage of risk is instruction pipeline. Now, that's a very, very interesting feature. Okay, think, uh, think in terms of risk instructions. Very simple instruction, right? 
if there are two types of instructions when we are dealing with risk either the memory uh, i mean memory load and store or processor uh, i mean processor in uh, i mean the register oriented instruction only these two right so the if if one instruction we require instruction fetch and instruction execute so register to register operand instruction fetch will be there and instruction execution is going to take place instruction fetch is how instruction fetch is very very fast because there is cache right that is why instruction fetch is going to be as fast as uh, uh, any micro code okay and then instruction execute from the registers right three registers two registers whatever may be the case okay so all register operand then there is a second type of instruction which will require instruction fetch once again from cache then the address calculation but the address calculation is going to be simple right and then the data transfer data transfer from the memory once again here data transfer is going to take place with the help of data cache right so that is also going to be much much faster so all these three like uh, so we have two type of instruction one of the type of instruction will require only f and e the second type of instruction will require f e in this particular case is uh, address calculation and d happens to be data transfer sorry for the same code but let's deal with that particular situation with the help of the context right so this is the way you can deal with as far as instruction pipeline is concerned now what is the pipeline kind of concept now if i have there are uh, six instructions here seventh instruction is the return now these instructions if they are to be executed in let's say uh, in a sequential manner so how they will be executed first fed of first instruction then the fed of the second instruction then fe of the next then the fe of the next and so on so forth so in effect we have uh, 6 plus 3 9 9 and uh, 9 and 8 17 so around 17 cycles right around 17 or 18 cycles will be required till we get the execution of all these instruction but what was the principle we just want to do this particular so, so there are 17 uh, 17 uh, cycles and how many instructions eight instructions that's not one instruction per cycle right so how risk try to do that particular thing divide the instruction into fetch uh, fetch calculate effective address and data transfer so these two instruction load instructions we have these three whereas in add subtract and multiply instruction what kind of these instruction these are register oriented uh, instruction so we will have fetch and execute fetch and execute fetch and execute and then finally store once again it's a load and store kind of instruction so it will have three steps so can you see the whole thing now there is an overlapped execution as soon as f of this is starting the f of second instruction right so as this fetch side fetch unit so these will be three separate units fetch execute decode very simple fetch uh, will be in different kind of uh, let's say hardwire execution second i mean e that is effective address is a second hardware and data transfer is the third hard, hardware stuff so like that you can divide your microprocessor into simpler subunits and these subunits will be executing just part of the step right and uh, maybe that uh, you can call it a simpler microprogram in this particular case right and this simpler microprograms are executing in an overlapped fashion why because when the fetching has already been done for this particular stuff this unit is no longer required the the stuff this particular instruction has moved to execution of address calculation right so it will be moving to this particular place so this unit is free so we start with the fetch okay and like that so the fetch is going on right and when the execution is taking place now this is where the data conflict right if it is not complete sometimes can happen right so this is where the possibility where one instruction per cycle may not be the case right but then we have to make appropriate uh, changes on those kinds of pipeline right so fetch and execute so we are assuming the data is available as soon as uh, it has been fetched right so it is available then fetch and execute fetch and execute and then fetch execute 
this particular cycle. So you can see in total 8 unit of the time approximately, it may require 9 sometimes because of those data conflict and so on and so forth. But that is immaterial. We are almost getting one cycle, one, one instruction per cycle and that is the essence of risk pipeline. But branches in risk pipeline are major problems, right? Branches are major problems because whether a branch is to be taken or not, okay, before that particular decision is taken, the next instruction is being fetched. Right? So the next instruction has been fetched in this particular case. So this pipeline right, may, may require, suppose the branch is not to be taken and return has to take place at this particular point of time only, then this pipeline is to be emptied and emptying a pipeline will require extra cycles, right? extra circuitry and extra circuitry make once again a simpler risk processor. Uh, uh, much, much more difficult, I mean, uh, more complex, right? Let me say branch in a pipeline means there is a branch instruction here, right? If RD is less than zero, then return. So if that particular branch, the execution will decide whether the branch has to take place or branch is not to take place. So if it is less than zero, then simply return. These two instructions are not to be executed. If not, then only these two instructions are to be executed, all right? So that is what is the branch penalty that the effect, whether the return has to take place over here. If return has to take place over here, these two instructions need not be calculated and need to be purged off. So these kinds of branch penalties are there when we are dealing with pipeline. And remember branch instruction is occurring 50 to 60 percent times in programs. So it is going to be the pipeline has to be optimized for the cases of branches. And one of the ways which uh, was utilized in uh, risk was to in insert a no uh, operation, right? There is a no operation, a ninth instruction has been added, right? So effectively nine cycles will be needed. So at this point of time, right, you don't need to empty the, uh, the, the pipeline, right? You will come to know, okay, uh, the branch is to be taken, is to, take, to be taken or not to be taken, okay? So you will be knowing that particular thing at that point of time. So uh, I think the F should come here. It has just moved off this particular thing. So uh, the F, E, D should come here and F, E should come back. So that way you will come to know that branch is to, has to take place or not. No operation, it doesn't do anything, it is just a blank operation, okay? So uh, this avoids the uh, delay, I mean delays your decision, the decision has been made and it delays the uh, decision of fetching the next instruction. Remember the risk pipelining is small and very efficient, right? So it not, it, I mean just one no operation will be good enough, okay? So it is not uh, harming your interest to a great extent. So that is the way the uh, risk pipelining is helping you as far as delayed decisions are concerned. However, you can optimize this particular branching because the branching is taking place on the basis of subtraction and that subtraction, okay, can, can happen uh, one instruction before, right? Uh, because it is uh, the decision is not taking place on addition, right? So therefore, uh, these two instruction can be moved before and this particular situation is to be created by the compiler, right? Uh, so if they can be moved, um, not every case will be uh, able to optimize this kind of a branching because we do not know whether this is going to happen uh, in all the cases, but, but if this is just a concept. As a conceptual buildup, you can optimize the delay, uh, delay branching by not inserting the no operation rather than just moving the uh, subtraction and uh, if condition before the add condition, right? So this is what? So this was the add instruction and you just moved uh, these two instruction before that. So the, the, by the time you come to whether branch has to be taken place or not, right? Uh, that 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 is going to be uh, executed at this point of time. By that time, this instruction has already been there, so it will be fetched and executed, and the, there is no need to fetch this particular instruction because decision is always there, already there, which is the next instruction to be executed. So that instruction will be fetched, and the pipeline will continue, and there is no need to uh, blank out that particular pipeline. So this is the way risk uh, architecture. 
is wonderful architecture, wonderful concepts are there. I'm not saying that we, I mean, these days if you see, uh, risk architecture is there, risk five architecture is there, which is, uh, and uh, previous to that is ARM, advanced risk uh, arch uh, ma management architecture was there. So all these architectures are there for embedded devices and so they have open architecture, the, the, their instruction set is open. So it is available to you for your uh, consideration, right? So these uh, architectures are very, I mean, they are popular in uh, many devices today and should be studied, should very interesting concepts, right? Not all the concepts may be utilized in a newer uh, machine design, but these concepts give us tremendous insights. And remember, when you are designing programs, when you are designing operating system, when you are writing system software in the long run, you will be utilizing the concepts Right? So these historical learnings are very, very important for moving ahead in uh, your thinking, in your uh, utilization of uh, these concepts into a, a different domain where it, they can be utilized. So that is the essence of learning risk processor and not that I should be learning the risk processor instruction set in, in deep set, right? In MCA you will not be required to do that particular thing. But then this concepts will be useful in the long run for your career, for your growth, for your thinking and for your application. That is how you should be using them uh, in your, uh, I mean, uh, in the future, so, right? Activities, study the blocks, right? Solve CYPs, solve questions given the assignment and previous year questions and discuss with us, right? If there are any problems, you are most welcome. Thank you for being with me today. Bye for now.